Welcome everybody to Out of the Stacks. This is Amanda and Carla and we are doing dystopian novels or books today. I guess they're all novels. Because why not? Being. Yeah, for the time being. Uh, they're not, they're make-believe stories. Um, yes. So I love dystopian. That's one of my favorite genres. Um, I do too. And I feel like it's not as, like it was super popular for a time and yes. now it's it's not as popular like that there aren't a lot of new dystopian I don't know if there are really any new dystopian books yeah I think it's kind of waned in its popularity I think it's still a thing but it's yeah. not as popular a lot of the new books for a while were all dystopian and yeah. a lot of the YA new books mm-hmm. were dystopian but I also think like it depends on your definition of dystopian I think the YA ones were like um you know like the Hunger Games like it was like a totally different world or like divergent where yes. like, everything was different the way society worked was different and it was like already established like that where some dystopian novels can be like can include the fall like yes. what happened to make this world what it is yes apocalyptic versus dystopian it can yeah. you know go from side to side here the line can vary and waver between mm-hmm. what is yeah what your definition of dystopian is mm-hmm. And I think, like, in The Hunger Games and Divergent, it was almost like a superhero book. Like, yes. Katniss and Triss, they're like superheroes, kind of. Yes. I they would don't... say by the end of the first novel, they were kind of superhero yeah. status. That and celebrity. Like, Triss kind of has superpowers. Like, she's Divergent. Katniss is, she doesn't have any, like, superpowers. Yes. She is a normal girl just trying to survive so mm-hmm. but I think we consider her kind of a super superhero yeah she had that sort of celebrity status yeah. that superheroes get or yes. come to have so. mm-hmm. like people were dressing up like her for Halloween yes yeah uh-huh. <laughs> I remember that mm-hmm. yeah, yeah I think um, Hunger Games was one of the first big dystopian series that made dystopian kind of popular and cool to read you know it wasn't kind of oh you're reading that book that's weird why do you want to read about the world being this weird different apocalyptic not normal kind of thing and so Mm -hmm. if you're reading hunger games that made it cool and popular and I so I think Mm-hmm. Hunger Games like, really pulled that genre into the forefront. Mm-hmm. It paved the way for books that might not have had a chance mm-hmm. otherwise, like things that weren't as popular, but a large number of people still read them because they were like Hunger Games. Correct. And I don't, yeah. I don't really have examples of that. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither, but yes, I agree. Uh-huh. They opened the world to kind of fantasy dystopian yeah and maybe some like more literary dystopian you know less of the sensational superhero type book and more of the like thoughtful dystopian um like i'm thinking of um Ishiguro, ne- never let me go. Mm-hmm. Have you, have you read that one? No, I've not, but I know of it. Kazuo Ishiguro, I've read it. It was a long time ago, so I can't remember a whole lot about it. But it's, um, it's a quieter book. It's more like literary fiction. Um, um well, the, also- in the literary fiction kind of genre or in that thread. Um, one of the ones that I put on my list was um, The Road by Cormac McCarthy. 
it's oh, that yeah. classic dystopian. Yeah. I mean, it's the story of a father and a son, and the son is a small boy, and they're on this walk on a road. Um, they're walking alone through a burned America. Like everything is burned and mm -hmm. there's ash and it's all dark and it's burned. Their destination, they're heading to the coast, although they don't know if anything's there or if anybody's there. And so they have nothing. They just have a gun to protect themselves. All these, you know, there's all these lawless people or these groups, these gangs that they have to protect themselves again and then they just have the clothes they're wearing they have to scavenge for food and so that's kind of the classic dystopian you know like you said a literary mm -hmm. kind of thing and yeah. so there's barely any dialogue the father talks to the son a little bit but the son's not very talkative and so it's a very stark and bleak novel and I think that's purposeful so mm -hmm. it kind of conveys the tone of the story you know mm -hmm. like you were saying it's very with the book you're mentioning it kind of is literary you want that tone set yeah I think something that um differentiates the two also like the Hunger Games and, the Di and Divergent the trilogies you know, at the end of those, they defeat the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And um, we're supposed to believe that the world is a better place. And in some of these literary fiction dystopian novels, like, there's no, you don't necessarily defeat the evil. Yeah. Uh, the world does not necessarily change in those. It's just like a snapshot of what this world is like and like in the road which i haven't read but it's a journey of a father and son but it's just yeah. a different world yeah the happy ending was just the survival of the trip the journey yeah you know yeah. you don't have the fairy tale happy ending it's just they survived you know but yeah you don't defeat the bad mm -hmm. guy the bad government Mm -hmm. yeah 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 um one that i really love that might be considered literary is station 11 by mm. emily st john mandel yeah um and this one hits a little close to home right now because yes what has happened in the world is that there is a, a sickness there's a, a virus an illness that has killed like I forget what it was, like two thirds of the population or something of the world. And so it's not like technology has stopped working. It's that there's no one to make the technology work. So that's like the premise of the book is so many people have died that like we don't have cell phones because there's no one to maintain cell service and we don't have internet because like a computer crashed somewhere and nobody can turn it back on there's no one to turn it back on that kind of thing um but it's it's fascinating and it's uh it's a slow book like it doesn't move quickly um but it's really fascinating. We did it uh, as our one city, one book pick a few years ago. And uh, it was interesting, very interesting. Yeah. And did you, you probably didn't go, um, there's a college of nursing in town that did a pandemic um, like, mock pandemic reaction thing like where they had different rooms and you would go through them and they would show us how a virus spread like they had people portraying patients and they were like okay this is patient zero and patient zero is now going to go over and touch this pen and the nurse is going to touch the pen so now the nurse is infected and like they had sticker dots mm -hmm. and anytime a person was infected they got a sticker and so it showed you how it spread through 
and then like you went to another room and it was the morgue and like okay this is how many people have died look at all these nurses and their full protective equipment and like here that was like three years ago now and here we are like basically living that reality yeah just crazy yeah i i've i have that book to um on my bookshelf to read and on my to read list and i've had that on my list since we did the you know um one book one city read Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's been brought up in news you know Mm -hmm. news people saying oh yeah this you know, novel she wrote is really close to home now, and look what she mm-hmm. predicted, and blah blah blah, and and now we know uh, how quickly viruses and you know, yeah, I guess viruses, pandemic, you know, things mm-hmm. like that spread, and you know, I, I might read it a little later now, yeah. you know, in a couple I, more years. I will but, say, there's not like. It doesn't describe the virus. It's not so much focused on the sickness. It's focused on like, you know, it's like 15, 20 years later. Um, And I don't feel like, like we are not living in reality where we don't have cell phones or internet because so many people have died that they've ceased to operate, you know. That's good. Yeah. That's good that we're not headed towards that. Yeah, I feel like it's, you know, it's just far enough outside of reality that you can read it and not feel like, oh my gosh, I'm living this. Okay, so it's more of a, phew, we we didn't go this far. It's not that bad. Okay, (laughs) okay, that's good. That's Uh good. That's good. Okay, well, then I might read it here. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, this year. And I feel like, okay, so in dystopian books, there's always a reason why the world has become what it is. And I feel like it's either a medical event or a political event. Like, those are yes. the two things. I mean, sometimes, okay, um, Susan Beth Peffer, um, what is the title of that book? Life as We Knew It. She has this series. There are four books. The first one is called Life as We Knew It. And the big event that happens in that is that an asteroid hits the moon and causes the moon to move closer to Earth. And that causes, like, changes in tides and gravity and stuff. So like all the volcanoes on earth erupt at once and the ash blocks out the sun and the tides get bigger and like wash away coastal towns and so that one is not political or medical Mm -hmm. that's like i don't know natural a natural disaster book kind of um that word um climate yeah climate yeah I'm like, what's that word that we always throw out? Climate change. But this, okay, so that book, um, what has stuck in my mind is that should we ever have to run to the grocery stores and like it's going to be the last time you can ever go to a grocery store, buy Progresso soup, oh. not Campbell's, because Campbell's you have to add water to, Progresso you don't. Well, that makes sense. So, Here's my pro tip for su- su- surviving the apocalypse, Progresso Soup. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. just start enjoying condensed soups. Yeah. Just, it'll be, you know, a little richer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Um, <laughs> um, I have a book series that it is a, it is a kind of a climate one, but it's, it's called, um, it's a birth, it's birthmarked series by Kara M. O'Brien, C-A-R-A-G-H, Kara, I'm assuming. Um, so birthmarked is the first book. 
um, the world. It's in the future and it has been baked dry by the harsh sun. So I guess it's climate related. There's no political. Yeah. Um, there are those that live inside the walled enclave and there are those that are living outside. Um, the main character is 16 year old Gaia Stone. She lives on the outside. She follows in her mother's footsteps and has become a midwife. And she delivers babies in the world outside the enclave and hands over a quota to be advanced into the privileged society of the enclave. Gaia always believed that this was her duty until the night her mother and father are arrested by the, the people that they were serving in the enclave. And then she is forced into this decision. Should she stay loyal to the people she's always served or should she rescue her parents by sneaking into the inside world um, it's really not your typical dystopian story. She's not your typical heroine. She's not looking to overturn the system. She just wants to rescue her parents, you know, and so she sneaks in and all things happen. And so like I said, at first, she's not looking to overturn the system, but by the end of the series, you know, she's, She's changed, so mm -hmm. it's very in, it's it's a really interesting, you know, twist on your dystopian. She's not like Katniss or Triss, where mm -hmm. you know she sees this injustice. She just wants to save her parents. So, like I said, in the beginning, she doesn't want to overturn the system, but in the end, her ideals have changed. So that's Birthmarked. It's the Birthmarked series, series by Kara M. O'Brien. Mm -hmm. And it's a YA series. Um, so I read this book a long time ago. Um, what year did I read it? 2015. I actually listened to an audiobook and I, it's a series, but I've only read the first one. Um, and I was thinking about it a lot more recently. It's called Divided We Fall by Trent Reedy. And it's about this teenage boy who had joined the National Guard. Um, and I think he's still in high school, but he's probably 18. So he, he joined the National Guard. And the guard is called up. Um, he lives in Idaho. The guard is called up on the governor's orders to police a protest in the Capitol. Oh, okay. Um, and it's like routine crowd control, and then his gun misfires. Um, and then, so like, it just creates chaos, and then 12 people are dead. The president wants the soldiers arrested, but the governor is going to protect them. So it turns into like this civil war situation where states start saying that they are going to separate from the United States. Um, and it's like, holy cow. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a little too real right now. So I only read the first one and I would need to reread it before continuing. But like, it's, it's good, but also like kind of heavy, kind of difficult to read. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's added to my list as well. Okay. Yeah. Divided We Fall, Trent. Divided We Fall. Um, my next one is the Rotten Ruins series by Jonathan Mayberry. Um, you know I love true crime. If you've li been listening to the podcast, you know I love true crime. Um, but my other love is zombies. Um, so in this zombie, it, it's a zombie infested post-apocalyptic world. The main character is Benny Imura, um, where every teen, hold on, let me start that over. Um, okay. In the zombie infested post-apocalyptic America, Benny Imura lives in, every teen must find a job by the time they turn 15 or their rations are cut in half. 
Then he doesn't want to be an apprentice as a zombie hum. Okay. <laughs> Let me start all over. Okay. In the zombie infested post-apocalyptic America where Benny and Merle lives, every teenager must find a job by the, by the time they turn 15 or their rations are cut in half. Benny doesn't want to be an apprentice as a zombie hunter with his boring older brother, Tom, but he has no choice. Um, this is a funny coming of age um, series in the new apocalyptic world. It's touching. It's full of teen angst. Um, Benny, like I said, he's an apprentice with his older brother, Tom, killing zombies, but he doesn't want to. He's kind of rebelling. It's, it's a typical, you know, teen YA book, but it's set in zombie killing times. And <laughs> so it's quick, it's funny. If you don't mind killing zombies, you know, it's a funny series. It's four books. It's quick to read. You know, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I love zombies and killing zombies. Mm -hmm. um, the Walking Dead is slash was one of my favorite shows. Um, so I really enjoyed this when it came out. It's the Rotten Ruin series by Jonathan Mayberry. Um, yeah, it was, it was really strangely funny because like I said, you know, teen angst, a kid mm -hmm. growing up, 15, 16, you know, 17 year old through the series, you know, he's mm -hmm. going through that Fun. time where you're a teenager, you know, you're experiencing all these things. What do I do with my life? You know, how, who am I? What am I? Mm -hmm. You know, and he. Is Funny in, dystopian is good. Yeah. And like I said, it's teen and so. He's trying to find himself and he has to get a job, but he doesn't want it to be a zombie killer, but he has to be, you know, so. Rough. Yeah, it is rough. And in a post-apocalyptic world, there's not much options. So, I mean, it was a, it's a really great series. So I would recommend it. I mean, it's not too heavy on the zombie killing, I guess, mm -hmm. but. <laughs> Rotten Ruin series by Jonathan Mayberry. So mm -hmm. I would recommend it. It's funny. It's funny. Mm -hmm. It's touching. It's touching too. It's got some <laughs> good scenes with the brothers, you know. So Yeah. Yeah. The rest of my list is mostly like classic um dystopian, like nineteen eighty four Brave New World. I read both of those in high school. So it's been quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of almost enjoyed Brave New World. Um, I think it's an easier read than 1984. Because 1984 is all, all about like double speak and it's like the language is different. Mm -hmm. uh, Brave New World is easier to read, I think. Um, the Handmaid's Tale. Okay, I read this book long before it became a TV show. So did I. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed it a lot. Like it was required reading in school. I think I had to read it in high school and then again in college. Yeah. And I, like I didn't mind that required reading because I enjoyed it. Um yeah. And I I think the TV show has done a really good job of adapting it. And it, you know, it's strayed a little bit from the book. But I think the choices they've made in the direction they're going are, are good. Um, and then there was a sequel that she just put out. Did I yes. read that one? I think I did. <laughs> I have not. The Testaments. Yes, I did. Um, I listened to it. So it's like 15 years later. And it's, it's like what happened after. Um, and it's because The Handmaid's Tale is written as like an academic presentation. At the end, there's this whole long section about like, here's where we found these tapes and we've 
transcribed these tapes and it's the journal of a woman and we don't really know her name and you know it's presented very academically and so the testaments is like oh we found another journal um so it's it's interesting some people like really hated the testaments um i thought it was good but a lot of the goodreads reviews for the testaments are bad like really bad <laughs> but those people don't know what they're talking about i think maybe they were fans of the show and they were wanting it to be like the yeah, show maybe. like following the sh i don't know but mm -hmm. like you almost had to be like and i feel like that's the problem anytime you read a book and you really like that book and then it gets made into a show or a movie and all of a sudden there are all these new fans and they know more about it than you do and you're like i read that book years ago like yes it's, it's like all of a sudden there's a bandwagon and you're forced to be on it even though like you built the bandwagon oh yes oh yes so yeah Mm -hmm. there that's my <laughs> that's my rant I get that rant I understand um I have one more book on my series or my list sorry um it is a series um it's kind of what we were talking about a dystopian that is kind of a fantasy world a world that is set up that is of a different world that has been like this for always kind of how Divergent and Hunger Game kind of are. Um, it's the Legend Trilogy by Marie Lu. Oh. Marie, yeah, Marie Lu is known for the dystopian books and kind of the fantasy dystopian worlds. Um, she's really good if you read any of her books. She's really good. Um, she does YA um, and I would recommend any of her books. Um, so the legend trilogy um legend is the first book um what was once the western united states is now home to the republic capital r republic a nation that is perpetually at war with its neighbors um the main character is born into a, an elite family um and into one of the republic's wealthiest districts it's 15 year old June. She's a prodigy being groomed for success into the Republic's highest military circles. Um, the other character um, is, his name is Day. He's 15 year old Day and he was born into the slums. He's one of the country's most wanted criminals. Um, one day June's brother, Mateus is murdered and um, Day has become the prime suspect. Caught into the ultimate game of cat and mouse, Day is in race for his family's survival while June seeks to avenge Mateus' death. But in a shocking turn of events, the two uncover the truth of what has really brought them together and the sinister length that their country will go to keep its secrets. Um, so the trilogy is of these two becoming close, finding out that the Republic has its secrets like any other government um, and what the government will go to to keep their secrets and you know them trying to overthrow the government and to tell the truth of what has been happening and so the next books are Prodigy and Champion. I super recommend the Legend Trilogy it's really good um and like i said marie lou is just a really good writer writer and all of her books are really good so any book so, and she usually writes trilogies YA trilogies so she's really good apparently i read this in 2015 <laughs> and no memory of that really <laughs> I feel, well, let's think about 2015, like there was so much dystopian, mm -hmm. like, so. That was probably the height of dystopian. Yeah, 
I should probably yeah. try it again. Yes. Yeah. Because she came out with like the Legend Trilogy, I think was her first one. She has many other, let me see. I, she has the yeah. Young Elites, is this other. Okay, I did not finish Young Elites and I don't remember why. I read the first two and it, it's a different, the Young Elites is a really different that's almost like more fantasy than dystopian. It's got magic and yeah, you know, it's more fantasy and magical worlds mm -hmm. than where um, the legend world is more dystopian and alternate universe than what, yeah. So I, I didn't really, super like the young elites i read the first two i didn't read well it looks like I'm, okay i did finish i read the first three of the young elites i guess um she also has the war cross i have the books for war cross but i've not read those but yeah marie lou has she's really good so I would mm -hmm. recommend her. Yeah. Oh, she did. Uh, she wrote a Batman book, um, DC Icons. How they um, they commissioned young adult authors to write books oh, about okay. teenage superheroes. So she has a Batman book. Um, Sarah J. Moss wrote Catwoman, maybe. Oh yes, I remember talking about good. this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. There's a Wonder Woman, of course. <laughs> Wonder Woman. That I've read. Lee Bardugo wrote Wonder Woman. That's it, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Um, did you come up with any movies? Um, I have two because here's the thing. I looked up a list of dystopian movies and most of them are just like um, the, the film adaptation film. of a book. Yeah. <laughs> but I have two that um, were not books. So Wally, -E, which is totally <laughs> dystopian. Yeah. Like what happens if we just keep piling up trash, which I don't know if this is normal, but I think about this a lot because <laughs> I like to recycle stuff. Um, yeah. I, I don't like throwing things away because I'm just like, well, it's just going in a pile. Like it's not actually going to be like destroyed wherever it's going. Like I'm, yeah. I'm just paying for someone to pile it up somewhere. So um, Wally children's movie but it's about like what if there's so much trash that we can no longer live on earth then we have to live in a spaceship and we all get really fat because we don't move anymore yeah so along with wally -E, i mean it's not a dystopian movie but that kind of triggers in my mind the um oh well, what is that movie it was from our childhood with robin williams and the forest um where they are deforesting. Oh, what is Ferngully? That? Ferngully. Oh, that always triggers yeah. in my mind Ferngully and all the for rainforests that are being torn down and yes. the oil. And um, that always makes me sad because I'm like, that is so happening. And, mm -hmm. you know. And there are fairies living in that forest. Yes. And the tree hurts when you yeah. scratch it and tear it down. Stop digging your initials you know, H plus L and a heart across it. No, that don't. Trees have feelings too. Oh my gosh. Did you see that someone literally carved Trump's name on a manatee? Yes, I did hear about that. that That's awful. My heart. Yes. Um, so in fifth grade, when you had those um, big like state tests, you know where you did the bubble test to make you know so mm -hmm. you're yeah state testing and you had 
the little reading part where you read this paragraph and you answered questions, whatever. And mm -hmm. my paragraph that I read was about manatees. And that was my first introduction to manatees in fifth grade. And so I've had this, you know, yen for manatees that manatees have a special heart or a special place in my heart and for mm -hmm. manatees. It was my name, Amanda. Amanda and manatees, you know, kind of like similar. Yeah. And so <laughs> uh -huh. I love manatees, you know, not as mm -hmm. much as I love unicorns, which anybody who knows, I'm obsessive about unicorns yes. to a cartoonish yes. degree. Um, but that's on purpose. But like manatees are really, and then so I read that and I'm just like, that just infuriates me and makes me want to like break down and cry because what did that manatee do to you what and like and like why why, why? what purpose why? <laughs> what what purpose what i, what? I don't know what what why what why <laughs> what and why <laughs> what and why so anyway what's your second movie <laughs> Okay, um, this one I had never really thought of as dystopian, but if you consider that like dystopian is because you're trying to create a utopia and in doing so you don't create a utopia. So like utopia is supposed to be like the perfect place. So dystopian is like you failed at creating a utopia. Yeah. Um. So the Truman Show. Oh. Which I loved. I don't know how old I was when I first saw this movie. And spoiler alert, but like, it's an old movie. You've seen it or you know <laughs> what happened. Um, <laughs> when it was revealed that like, this is not a real place. Everyone around Truman is a hired actor. And he's living inside this giant dome in the like the, the real world exists outside of this dome and he's living inside this dome and his entire life is a tv show my mind was blown and i just love that movie and like that um the woman who's like fired from the show because she wants to tell him the truth and then like she's waiting for him when he finally escapes like that was just the greatest part for me. So yeah. I just, oh, I love it. And I'd never thought of it being dystopian, but it is. Yeah, now that you say it, it is. Um, I would have to say I've never watched that movie. Oh my gosh, you should. I've it's never so watched good. that movie. You should, um, it's Jim Carrey, but it's like- I know what it is or who it is. A serious role. It's it's like it's not Jim Carrey just being stupid. Yeah. Uh, Laura uh, Linney is in it. Yeah. Which I just I've grown to love Laura Linney, um, and she's yeah. the, the voice of Masterpiece Theater on PBS, and I think that's just so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I guess I'm um, older when I like the voice of Masterpiece Theater. I love Masterpiece Theater. I yeah. do. Are you watching um, the new show? <laughs> yes, I am. I watched it last night. Good, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know I brought, you triggered my mind of a movie um, that is dystopian, and it's also a television show, Snowpiercer. Yeah. Um, it was a movie in 2014. It is now a television show, its second season is going to be soon, sometime this year, I don't know when this year. It's on, the show is on TNT, I think, TBS, TNT, one of those two. They're both um, related. Um, Snowpiercer, the, I think the world has, it's not ended, but it's gotten like super, 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 super cold because of a climate event of some mm -hmm. sort. Mm -hmm. And um, these 
fortunate, I guess. Well, it was supposed to be the ultra rich people were going to be on this train that is a thousand and one cars long, but um, the poor kind of forced their way on to the train. And so the very last car is um, the very, very, very poor people. And so there's just been, I'm trying to, well, the movie and the television show are very different. The movie doesn't quite um, follow, I think it was a, sorry. I think it was a book or a comic book at some point. And so I don't think the book or the movie follows the book and the television show follows a book more anyway and so the um lower class um rebels to try to get more rights more food more heat more whatever and so um the television show is a trillion times better than the movie honestly um but the movie is good as well um i think the television show tries to take place maybe a couple of years after the movie's events take place, but Snowpiercer is definitely a dystopian movie slash television show. And the train is perpetually in motion because if they stop, then everything freezes and then they freeze. Mm -hmm. But it's a very, I would recommend the show especially mm -hmm. the television the movie not so much but the television show is definitely mm -hmm. really good and so the second season will be starting up soon mm -hmm. i thought of one more tv show okay um which i don't i guess you have to figure out what your definition of dystopian is Mm -hmm. The man, the man in the high castle. Oh yes, that's so good. Series. Yeah, so good. It's based on a book by Philip K. Dick, but it's basically mm -hmm. what would have happened if the Axis powers, so Germany and Imperial Japan, Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan, what if they had won World War Two? So they're in charge of the United States. So like. Japan kind of controls the western part of the United States and Germany controls the eastern part and um, it's about people trying to like overthrow these evil governments um, and I've never watched all of the series because I always get like distracted somehow um, but I want to, because it is good. Um, it's interesting, like how the cultures of Japan and Germany are kind of injected into American culture. Um, and this takes place in the 60s, so it's, you know, like 15 years or so after World War mm -hmm. II has ended. Um, and it, it's, it's really interesting. That's so good. It's such a, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. You, you should finish the series. I know, I know. I just like, you know how when you're looking for something to watch on your 57 streaming services and you're like, well, there's nothing to watch because <laughs> yeah. you're like overwhelmed by the volume of options. Last night, my sister and I ended up watching a Disney Plus docu-series um, about a veterinarian in the Yukon because, you know, we've watched everything else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was really fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't help that you also have, like, three streaming services and, Yeah. Oh, we have way more than three. Yeah. We have, like, all of them. 
We've recently been binging The Big Bang Theory on HBO Max. Like, I've probably seen every episode already, but why not go back and watch all of them? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'd much rather watch something that can be mindless and I can space out too. And so if yeah. I do miss something, I won't be mad that I missed something. As where like if I have to pay attention, mm-hmm. then uh, then I'm be mad and I have to go back and then I've wasted my time. Mm-hmm. You know, or if I get caught up in my phone and I've missed something, then I won't be mad that I've you know missed half of the episode of Wandavision or you know. Mm-hmm. and so oh can yeah. we take a second to talk about wandavision I, well i've not watched the first episode so we can we can talk about it as long as you don't spoil anything but i just spoil- all i have to say is that i'm so confused <laughs> <laughs> okay. i have no idea what's happening like i have a tiny bit of maybe a guess about what's happening but i really don't know well see i want to binge like at least two or three episodes at once so i don't have to wait and be confused so the fact there that are two there are they two released, they released two okay but you might wait for three because okay. i'm so confused okay no, i, I need wait. somebody to tell me what is happening don't don't ask me <laughs> <laughs> It could be a dystopian. Like, it's like, it's weird. They seem I would definitely put that as dystopian. Fantasy. Yeah. That fantasy dystopian world, you know, because the real world doesn't have any of the Avengers in it. So that's kind of the that's true. alternate universe dystopian fantasy thing. Does so that mean we don't yeah, that need the weird. Avengers yet? What? Does that mean we don't need the Avengers yet? <sighs> but we do. That's we do. Sad. We, <laughs> I mean, oh. don't, we don't have aliens coming out of our sky and things like that. Yeah. You know, so I guess we don't need the Avengers yet. But it would be okay. really fun if we did yeah i mean i mean we do have things that are i wouldn't say keeping us entertained but keeping us glued to our television yeah you know (laughs) so yeah i guess we don't need the avengers yet sure but (laughs) it would be nice if they were here (laughs) They were here. Um, Yeah. Um, That is good. Movies and two TVs. Yeah. That was good. We knew more than we thought we did. Yeah, we always know more than we think we do. Yeah. (laughs) I guess that's better than thinking we know more than we don't. No, thinking, yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when we set out to do this, we never claimed to know what we were doing. Um, no, there is, n- I think there is nothing legally binding that we said we That's know true. a whole lot. And we have absolutely no clue what we're doing. Lived up to that fact that we have, we know very little. No, we don't know very little. We know some things. We know some things. We don't know everything. We just, we have to talk it out, talk it through, and then we know things. Yeah. We just gotta talk it through. Yeah. And we'll find out we know There's things. strength in numbers. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. It's fine. Yeah. I guess so. We just gotta talk it out, and then we stumble on the fact that we know something. Yeah. Yes. It's a two-person support group. Yes. We're part of, we we have our we are part of a pyramid. We just don't have our third corner. 
sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's anyway. Weird. <laughs> um, today is MLK Day, January yeah. 18th. Yep. Um, it's been quite a January. It has been. And it's only January 18th that we got almost a little less than half a month left. Yeah. Um, Two more days to inauguration. Yep, that's Wednesday 18th, and Biden will be president. Yes, finally. Uh, finally. Um, I, know. I, watched, I watched Kamala Harris on CBS Sunday Morning yesterday. Yeah. And if you didn't see it, go look for the video. She is just so cool. I mean, I don't know how to describe her. Like, she's incredibly intelligent, mm -hmm. down to earth, passionate about what she's doing I mean she just seems like the real deal like it's hard to believe that she's real you know like this is not yeah. how politicians are supposed to be um, but also like you know I've seen her be kind of ruthless and stand up for herself so I know she can um but it was just a really good interview. It's two parts. The first part is just her, and the second part is uh, they bring in her husband. Yeah, and, I saw that part with her and her husband. Yeah, and that's just, like, so nice to see, too, to see him talking about, like, how he's just going to be there so, to support her, and, like, he knows how, how tough this is going to be, and so he just wants to be there to support her. And, like, oh, my gosh, like, how are you, like, so perfect? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, oh. She was talking about how she's always worn Chuck Taylors. It's yes. all things she did for the, you know, running for vice president, you know, to put on a, you know, oh, look how down to earth I am. She's always worn Chucks and jeans, you know. Yeah. I it's mean, forever. I do too. Like, I've been wearing Chucks. Yeah, you have forever. Yeah, I mean, like, I get it. They are super comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and they yeah. match, like, everything. You know, everything. you can get them yeah. all the different colors. Yeah. Or, like, in Wonder Woman. I have Wonder Woman high tops. They're pretty cool. I yeah. don't wear them a lot because they're white. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to. I have a them. pair of light gray, and they, the toes always get kind of scuffed up really easily. And I'm like, yeah. Um, try a what? magic eraser. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what am I doing with my toes? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just getting in and out of my car. What am I doing? It's not like I'm kicking uh -huh. things. Like, what? I just got some. So we, I went to an outlet mall with my sisters and there's a Converse store and I got oh. some, they were marked $25. I got them for 18 nice. and there's sparkly light blue. Ooh. Yeah. They're pretty cool. Shiny. I have to do some swift dance moves so they sparkle in the light. Sure thing. <laughs> yes. I need a video of that. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I'm also, you know, because I'm in my 30s, I'm mm -hmm. having really bad arthritis in my knee right now. So <laughs> there will be no dancing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess this is an excuse, old lady. Uh huh. Uh huh. I am. Okay, well, like I said, today is January um, 18th. Yeah. So we got a little less than half a month. So we'll see where the rest of January takes us. Yeah. We'll first half of January in was, well, the first week of January was quite an exciting time. Uh huh. Let's see where the last week of January leads. But so. Yeah. We'll hope yeah. for better days ahead. Pretty much. There have to be better days ahead, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll be better days ahead. And maybe, somewhere. In a, maybe in a month, you and I yeah. will be vaccinated. I hope. I, yeah, I hope it's it's getting there. Yes. Yeah. There. It's getting there. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. So February, we'll, we'll hope for better in February. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody check back with us in February. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bye. Bye.